super tiny intro. I programmed Warcraft 3 for seven years. I programmed Starcraft 2 for four years. And then because Blizzard games were so awesome, I tried MOBA for the first time ever, which I originally thought is a bit of an easier version of an RTS. But by now, I don't see it that way anymore. There's lots of cool, entertaining, complicated, deep, and interesting MOBAs out there. Hots was my first, then I tried Dota, and now I'm trying uh, League. Very eager to learn the different mechanics that there are in the game. So I love that you, know, you came to chat and reached out and was like, hey, I can teach you a thing or two. I like top lane. Uh, I like I like top lane and mid lane the most, I think. So I'm looking forward to dive a bit more into that. And I'm also curious uh, to know a little bit more about you. I decided to just ask you instead of looking you up, are, are you like a, a pro? Did you get famous via streaming? Uh, how did it happen? Yeah, um, thank you for asking also and very nice again to meet you lucky that we had like the technical difficulties but yeah so me uh basically i've started playing league around season three so around 10 years ago and i've always done that casually and um then gradually as i was playing league i got to challenger just one tricking uh riven and then that led to me becoming a professional league of legends player for around three to four years uh, i played professionally in the erl system so not in the highest level i played a grade below and then um, I was doing that for two and a half years uh, in SK Prime. I decided it's not the path that I wanted to follow. And so starting last year, November, I turned to streaming and um, I used the knowledge and the, I guess the experience that I gained from a professional career to go more into educational League of Legends content. It started with me only doing it with Riven, but now I've expanded it to trying to do it with every top lane champion. And for the future, I also want to do other roles. So that, that's me pretty much. I just teach everything I know about League of Legends in a digestible way so I can help people learn everything that I've learned over the past 10 years of playing it. Oh, very cool. Uh, and you said you were in SK Prime. Isn't that a Korean team? No, it's it's a it's a German team. Oh, OK. It sounded like one of those uh, Korean telecom companies like SK, SKT, SK South Korea is a German team. OK, I see. Yeah, cool. it's SK Gaming. And you and, oh, re, oh, OK, OK, yeah. Yeah. Back back when SK was made, they were still called Shrut Commando. Uh, back in uh, 2003, they were my mortal enemy. I was in 4K. It was SK. We were the two like big European teams in Warcraft 3. Really cool to see the throwback uh, to that team and that they're still around. I wasn't aware. Uh, so okay, so you had the pro experience, and then since about a year, you've been full time streaming. Yeah. So um, I guess my first question would be: So I've never played Dota myself, and I can't really relate. But how much experience do you have on Dota? Is that's like a very it's a MOBA that's somewhat comparable, right? Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there are denies there on your own creeps, in addition to CSing, which adds a layer of uh, complexity that some people enjoy and some people do not enjoy, right? I'm, I'm someone that tries to appreciate, and I wasn't always this way, but I try to appreciate every game for what they are and for what they're good at. And I'm not like a tribalist that says this game is better, that game is better. Some people will like it, some people don't. Heroes of the Storm dispenses with all last hitting and denying, so that's even simpler and really just focuses on the fighting and the action. In Dota 2, you can deny your own creeps. So my first mentality when I'm looking at lanes meeting is like, I'm thinking this creep that's almost dead on my side, I should be last hitting it, right? So I need to overrule that instinct. And then instead I look for a different hobby. So I'm trying to understand how the skill difference is expressed in, in League of Legends. I can last hit your creeps, and because you know that's all I can do, I can't deny my own creeps, you could use that as an opportunity to go in on me. Since you know the, the way that your creeps are dropping low on HP, that forces my hand in order to try and last hit them. And you can prey on the predicted movement that I'm going to be exhibiting afterwards. Likewise, I can do the same thing to you. So I'm imagining that that's where a lot of the skill expression is. You know I'm going to step up, especially as a melee champ, to uh, get nearer, and then you can aim your skill shots for that, etc. For the rest, Dota 2 is much more about decision-making and macro strategy. There is also micro-mechanics for, uh, for heroes and champions, definitely. But I find that League of Legends is much heavier in the skill shot department and feels a little bit like a, like a fighting game, you know, like Street Fighter, you're executing these combos. I hated playing Yasuo and Yone because they were so difficult <laughs> initially uh, in the mechanics. Uh, yeah, so uh, it, a lot of it is like trying to outplay each other with like good mechanics uh, and I guess going in on each other when last hits are happening. Okay. 
Okay. Um, I'm trying to resort all that. I think, I believe my initial question was, how much experience do you have on Dota? But I learned a lot, I learned a lot more. But I feel like you gave me a whole backstory, but answer Sorry, that question, but it's question. all good. Yeah. yeah, you forgot the question. You know, it's streamers, all good. Right? Uh, for... <laughs> it's okay. Uh, okay. I have one year of experience, roughly, uh, in Dota, and I'm 6,000 MMR, which is kind of the equivalent, I've been told, to Diamond in League, if you can try okay. to draw a parallel. <clears throat> So, probably in Dota, like I said, I've never played it before, but we can Grab kind of compare one, it. And what I always talk about is like, you know, I, I like to call it, you know, your fundamentals, your your core concepts, basically concepts that you utilize every single game, right? Sure. Yeah. Um. So you were talking a lot about means, means denying. I've never heard of that concept, but it sounds very interesting. In League of Legends, exactly as you state, um, having a bigger minion wave is always an advantage in the sense that that means, of course, that. Uh, you're going to be stronger m through multiple reasons. Your mains, of course, do a lot of damage. Okay. And uh, fighting with a bigger main wave is ob obviously a lot easier. But the core concept that I want to get towards is understanding uh, level of timer. So this is one of the first concepts that you are going to be able to apply in every single game you play, be it on mid lane, be it on top lane, and whatever champion you play as well. So one of the key concepts that I would advise to anybody, so for example, with this minion, you're hitting exactly level six that I saw in your stream, yep. and that is around the 515 timer. So that wave, simply because you have not lost a single minion worth of EXP, that is why you hit level six at that timer. Uh, now, okay. these timers are consistent every single game. So uh, I could screen share quickly as well, but I'm not sure if that's going to work. Yeah, I'll watch your uh, stream. I could try How it. About? Sh shall okay. we do that? Well, I'll just type it. Everybody's gonna get flashbang, so that's careful. I can't, I have like, I have no path open. You're gonna get flashbang a little bit from, sorry for that. Everybody's but so I'll type it out. Bank, so you everybody. always just start level yeah. one, very simple. And um, so you've played how many League of Legends games right now? Uh, I've probably take? played about 40 games. Okay. So if, is it in Dota similar where you where you level up every time? Is it through means or is there other ways to level up? Yep, um, there are some alternative ways, but it's mostly through minions and then uh, champion kills, I suppose, right? Yeah, okay. So for League of Legends, very simple every game. Uh, level two is always going to be the first wave plus the one melee minion on the second wave. This could ah. also be a caster. Alternatively, you can do it in two ways. It is also the first five minions of wave one, and that would be three melees and two casters. Uh, so, are, are you also familiar with what a caster minion is, what a melee minion is? Uh, the caster ones are in the back and the melee are in the front? Exactly. So, um, Wait, hold on. I don't. Uh, so, you can also do the first five minions, three, melee, uh, yeah, three melees, two casters, and then plus one melee of wave two. So, here you notice in total you've actually only killed six minions, right? Five minions here and one minion here. And here we kill seven minions. Because there is three melees in the first wave and three casters, right? Every wave always has three melees and three casters. Yeah. One melee minion, you get level two. So this is seven minions in total. And you can also do it with only six minions, meaning three melees, two casters, and then one melee. And the whole goal with this is understanding that melee minions give more resources than caster minions. So it's a very simple concept, but just understanding this, knowing that you get level two from six minions instead of seven, can be the whole difference between getting your level up faster and ultimately killing your opponent. Because every level up, so level one to level two, or level three to level four, gives you a lot of benefits, right? Every time you level up, you gain a lot of flat stats that you don't see instantly in your inventory, but you have them. So if you level up, let's say on a champion like Garen, you'll instantly get 90 HP flat, you get some armor, you get some magic resist, you get some attack speed, you get some attack damage, right? So all of these stats roughly translate into 600 gold instantly spawning in your inventory. On top of the fact that you get an extra ability. So level three is, uh, do you follow me thus far? Because now well, I'm also in the mediating uh, session. I'm not 100% sure why you have an alternative countdown. Did, did uh, you say something? Oh, I okay. didn't hear it. Yeah, okay, hold on. Uh, I think we've got the uh, Discord did issues. Did you Discord down? Go ahead. Okay, so um, where was I? Oh yeah, so, so the, the reason I showed you a different alternative is ultimately whoever gets his level up timer first is going to be at a significant advantage, right? Mm -hmm. If you are fighting a mean wave, uh, in the center of the wave and um, you're fighting your opponent whilst fighting the minions. If you can get level two by only killing six minions, ultimately that's way more efficient than getting level two by only killing seven minions. Ah. Does that make sense? Yeah, but the second wave will arrive before the first wave is completely dissipated. Is that what you mean? That's very often what will happen. I can actually maybe get a game example. Let me see if I can quickly pull up a game that I played today that yep. will instantly show you the example too. And I can maybe even go into like a matchup where it is suboptimal. 
I had your stream still open, so let me go here for a second. And I'm going to go to the vault. Because uh, I tried, this is a trick that I will use every single game, simply because it is so good to use. Cool. I, I like um, that we're immediately getting into the, the detailed weeds of things. I love uh, studying like this. Usually there'll be like one guy in chat being like, you're overthinking things. And I'm like, no, that's that's what we do. <laughs> that's what we like. Yeah, it, it could be a, like you can approach it two ways, right? Saying it's overcomplicating things. But here you see a very clear example of where we're fighting in the first wave, right? So um, I'm playing Aurelia against the Jax. And okay. in theory, this is a very unfavorable matchup for me. Okay. Uh, however, if I secure my level two first, and this is one of the core lines that I always utilize, is if you get your level up timers faster than your opponent, ultimately any losing matchup can become a winning matchup because you have more means, meaning that you level up faster, you have more damage through means. Sure. And if you're always a level up over your opponent, he can't realistically fight with you. So you can see everything on the stream now, right? Yep. Uh, I see that you're using a skill shot to kill all three melee creeps at the same time. Yes. So for me right now, the most efficient way to get to level two would be to... So normally what you could do is kill all three of these casters and yeah. then get the melee and I would get my level two. But instead what I do is I only need to get two casters and one melee and I would get my level two as well. I don't need to kill this third caster of the still like, first wave, basically. And I would still hit level two faster than him. Uh, casters and I, are worth more XP? No, melees are more, worth more XP. Oh. The, hence, I can leave the caster alive. So, so to, to go back on this, normally to go level two, right? So I pull up the flashbang, careful. Mm -hmm. So you need the first wave plus one melee minion, which would mean seven minions, right? Yes. So that was yes. the first three melees we got. Yeah. These three casters and then a melee minion on wave number two. Yeah. Instead, what you can do as well is simply go for the first uh, three melees. Yeah. You only need two casters and one minion on wave two to get your level two as well. So um, it's just having that knowledge that here I would never focus on the caster. I would always focus on the melee, knowing that consciously this is going to make me level two way faster. So now, even though I've only killed six minions, I should go for the caster here, but actually a melee walked up. I get level two, I mean, around the same time as him. Um, but in a lot of scenarios, I could get it faster than him, and it would mean that I get to level up faster and I could kill him. And so you only killed six minions, yeah? Yeah, I have only six minions and I've got to my level two here. In fact, okay. I killed... Two minutes, there's still two casters alive. This is a very rare instance, but the, the, the point still stands. Okay. Um, you can apply this to both ways, right? You can start uh, counting the EXP for yourself and for your opponent. But this is already going way too in-depth. You're not going to be able to focus on that. So that's okay. I still want to keep it relatively simple. Yeah. Melee it's creeps just... are worth more XP. Uh, get as many of them as you can uh, as early as possible so you can get to six creep kills uh, before uh, before them. Uh, you can get exactly. six instead of seven and then immediately use the level two power spike to unleash all your skill shots and your auto attacks and so on because you've got 600 gold worth of uh item advantage in addition to the ability point you get right yes and then there's one more detail I i'll add that detail a little bit later so level three is the first two waves plus two melee means first two and waves and another two melee minions okay yes and level four is the first three waves plus three melee and oh, one caster. I see a pattern, roughly one extra uh, each time. But yes. Here you also need another caster, caster as well. Okay. Yeah. So these timers, just being aware of these timers, this is going to help you short term in the sense that understanding level up timers, understanding the strength of level up timers will help you structure your laning phase a lot more efficiently. Yes. And again, you can utilize this in both ways. In the sense that if you're playing a strong early game champion, you can utilize this in an aggressive way. If you're playing a weak early game champion, you can also do this to avoid certain traits. As in, if uh -huh. you're going to get pushed in early, you know exactly when your opponent is going to hit that level up timer and you can avoid their trade opportunities. I see. Now, if you're killing their creeps earlier, you're, you'll end up shoving the wave a little bit, and this can be repaired by what I, I guess I call rubber banding, but you call it something else, like when it goes into the tower and it comes back? Yeah, I call it bounces. You can call it rubber bounce. bending. We're, we're, we're talking about the same concept. Yeah, yes. sure. So you can bounce it, and you can end up fixing equilibrium again, etc. But this could potentially expose you to jungle ganks. Now, where do they play in, in how you... Uh, tight rope walk the lanes uh, safety because I, I could be inside their tower i'll be like cool i'm level four first he's level three but now the level three jungler or four jungler comes in and ruins my day very interesting question so we can look back into the, this example i believe it's going to happen here is so here even though this is a realistic uh bad measure for me to to re, uh, reiterate on that but simply because i get the wave priority here yeah right well, so to, to uh, question could, how, you, how could you say what wave priority is 
wave priority basically means that I have killed more minions than he has. Oh yeah, okay. So th that I have the priority on the wave. Okay. Um. So here to to reiterate, how many minions would I need for my level three? Let's see. Uh, you are currently level two, and from the top of my memory, you need two waves and and two melee. Yeah. So I only need two minions now, and I have level three, right? But from Jax's yeah. perspective, you would have to kill this. These four minions that are still remaining, right? And two extra. Oh, and because yeah. of that, simply because of having that wave priority, even though this is a losing matchup for me, because I get my level three first, that's going to set me up in a position where I'm basically always at. Because if I'm level three, I'm 600 gold over my opponent yeah. plus an extra ability. So Jax can never approach me here. Have you ever, now, have you ever yeah. tried to think of what a level one hero is worth in terms of expressed gold? Or is that nonsensical? Uh, it is, but basically there are certain champions that are extremely broken level 1, and there's just champions that are super weak level 1. So, um, have you played Darius before? Uh, I have played Darius, yes. So, Darius is one of the most broken level 1 champions, and I like to call it a stat-checking champion, because if you proc Darius' passive, so basically hit somebody 5 times, your passive procs, and you get 30 flat AD. And 30 AD translates into 1000 gold. So there's no champion wow. in the game that can get 1,000 gold level 1 besides Darius passive. Mm. That is one example. Another example would be Olaf. You played Olaf before? I have not played Olaf yet, no. So the lower HP you are on Olaf, his passive is the more attack speed you will get, which is also a very expensive stat. Ah. So there are certain champions that have uh, more stat check potential, uh, and as a result of that, they are basically stronger level 1. That's oh. really it. Okay, okay. So, Irelia as a champion, uh, you see these four stacks right here? This four, number four? Uh, yes. So, this is, this is Irelia passive. Basically, if you have hit your abilities on either means or champions uh, four times, so that could be four Qs, that could be one W, one E. You get four stacks, you have a passive, and that passive you see here on this hit, I did 91 uh, f uh, phys physical damage and I deal 20 magic damage. Yes. I get magic on a damage whenever I have my passive and every time I Q, the passive will reset. So every time you see it's here running, I use my Q and it will reset every time. So yep. that's a really a passive. So just every champion kind of has those, I guess, values by having um, certain passives and stuff like that. But to get to the question that you had initially asked about the rubber banding, so if I ask you a question, because you were talking about jungle ganks, yeah. Would you say you are more vulnerable when you're pushing towards your opponent or after you've crashed the wave into enemy's turret? Hmm. I guess by the time it already crashed turret, you're allowed to go away. You don't need to linger, right? So you wouldn't be very vulnerable. So the, exactly. dang the most dangerous point would be the point where you're at right now when you're past, wouldn't it? Yes, exactly. So... Your question was after the rubber ring. So let's say I, I've pushed this wave into the third. If I would not touch this minion wave, it would by default bounce back into me. Yes. Uh, and as a result of that, I'm not forced to walk up for last hits anymore, meaning I'm not necessarily gankable. You're not I always forced, even though you would be letting three creeps go because the alternative of death is worse. Do you mean like this? Exactly. So you understand the concept very well. Yeah. Because um, ultimately, if you're forced to walk up for last hits, Either your opponent has a freeze or, you're, you know, the wave is just slow pushing towards your opponent. Those are, generally speaking, going to be your more vulnerable moments in the game mm. simply because you're forced to walk up for last hits. Yes. And then, of course, the other way around, um, if the wave is pushing into you, you can just stand in EXP range. And then, um, sure, you will lose some gold. But, of course, the short-term loss that you have is way better than um, the cult ever walking up and getting hit to a gank. Also, to uh, maybe reiterate it on that. I talk about turns in the lane. So right now, I spoke to you earlier about, um, what did I say? Wave priority, right? This is what yes. I recall wave priority. Yeah. Yes. Whenever somebody has wave priority, I would call it their turn in the lane. What does a turn in the lane mean? Basically, mm -hmm. you have a bigger minion wave that usually will also result in you having your level ups timer faster. So you're very hard to approach in that regard. Hmm. This is a lot more important in the early game because you get so many more level ups, right? But the later in the game you go, there will be less like this and there's probably going to be a lot of things that have already happened. But it's very important to always be aware of what is your turn currently in the lane. Is it your turn? Is it your opponent's turn? Who's going to hit the level ups first? Et cetera, et cetera. So the interesting concept here to understand, of course, is we, we stated that you're most vulnerable whenever you're pushing towards your opponent, but at the same time, you're also more strong because you have that wave priority, right? Yes. It's like kind of like a double-edged sword. S similarly, um, 
your opponent is most vulnerable whenever the wave is pushing towards you. But at the same time, if you were to fight them, it could be really bad because, you know, if you fight them and you die, you're not only going to lose the full wave that was pushing towards you, it is also going to be rubber banding or bouncing away from you afterwards simply because the wave would crash into your turret and yes. push away from you again, right? Yeah. So you have to always be very aware of what is currently my position in the lane in terms of 1v1. And then also, you know, there's going to be a lot of other stuff that we'll talk about, such as jungle tracking. But I first want to keep it more towards the base concept of me and waves and EXP. Yeah. So um, right now we've written this down. And we also noted that every level up timer is equivalent to around 600 gold, right? Yeah. Then the next thing that I want to talk about is learning how to sync cooldowns with our level ups. Because you'll use this as an average champion. So give me one second. I'll open up a very nice clip that I've always had prepared for this moment because it shows it in basically the, the best way possible. Uh, so I could search this up. All right. Um, I'm just going to open it up on my stream. I like how your name is just like Aurelia. Do you have like... <laughs> do you have like an account for every champ you play? I run yeah. the noise. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing unranked to ma so basically I'm playing from unranked to master elo on every top lane right now, ah. with the end goal that I can teach every top laner on their specific champions how these concepts that I use are applicable to all of them. Nice. That's my main goal. Very cool. Yeah. So here um, I'm playing Riven. So you you've watched some Riven guys. You're somewhat familiar with it, and all of his leashing is jungler. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about jungle pathing later, but let's just look into the lane right now. So, um, I said Olaf is a very strong champion, right? Because of his passive. Yep. And in theory, Olaf beats Riven level one. However, I get the wave priority here because he was leasing his jungler. And as a result of that, I'm already much harder to approach because I have more means and I would realistically have an easier time getting my level two, right? Even though the second wave isn't here yet, Olaf already has a more safe posture because of the priority that I have in the wave. Okay, uh, the amount of damage that these five creeps do, uh, these five minions actually matters a lot to the to its health pool. <clears throat> yes, if, if he were to fight me, let's say he was standing here and he hit me, this mean damage, like especially in the early game, it stacks up really fast. Okay, and uh, you mentioned a term that I only know because of my coaching with Mac, last week uh, you said he was helping leash uh, his jungler so for those that watch my channel that are not uh, godlike in league yet which is probably the minority <laughs> people are like so good uh, but uh, leashing jungle is where he helps the jungler hit creeps a few times to get his uh, jungler a running start right yeah uh, also very good that you mentioned this i will subconsciously sometimes use phrases or terms that i expect people to understand yeah, of course but yeah. if you can't hear that I'm guilty, I'm sorry. It's hard for me to kind of get into, I guess, my mind of 10 years ago and certain concepts I will just <laughs> kind of skip. So sorry for that. It's very good that you explained it. Yes, no, you okay. explained it perfectly. I'll ask if I don't know. I happen yes. to actually know this one. Yeah. yeah, but please ask as often as you can because, yeah, yeah it's, it's also a bit new for me to coach somebody that's like very new with legal Legends, but it's also a very nice way. Yeah, cool. But okay. you're so far, you're an amazing coach. I can see you have a very structured approach already. Uh, you already teach this to your people on YouTube and Twitch and everything. So it's been really smooth so far. Keep it up. Thank Lovely. you. Thank Good. you. Okay, so um, so here I'm going to allow this medium wave to be relatively centered. Okay. And that is for multiple reasons. Oh. I want to try and use the strength that I have on my level two timer, but here, even though it doesn't really show, I've made a very big mistake here. What you did you do? It. What did you do? I, I used my Q out of sync with my level up because this one minion right here is going to give me my level two, right? Okay, yeah. But if I use my Q right here, I can never utilize this level up simply because it would be on cooldown. So I would hit level two, but then I can't use any of my abilities. But it will only be on cooldown for like six seconds. That is true. But what if this Olaf and this will very often happen, would walk up at the time that I hit my level two. And this will happen very often up until easily master Elo. And I say this jokingly a lot on stream, but it's very true. I get kills like this at level one, level two. Of course, I'm playing Riven, which is a very strong early game champion. Up until masters, easily just utilizing the level up timer in sync with my cooldowns. You very now, commonly kill people as level two against level one? Yes, very often. 
for me, this is still where everyone's got a cup of coffee in their hand, kind of trying to figure out <laughs> what's happening oh, in the lane. No, I'll reiterate that. I'll put it even more important. The more you play League of Legends, the more you'll notice it too. But the first four waves in your lane, especially in top lane, are almost game decisive in the sense that everything that happens you know, in your lane is more or less a result of what happened in those first four waves. If oh you fall God. behind there, it's going to feel really hard to get back unless your opponent makes a blunder or they're making multiple mistakes. If you get ahead, the same concept applies. Most, like the rest of your landing phase, will very often be a result of how good your first four waves went. For wow. example, if I were to push into my opponent right now, and, and that jungler would catch me behind, and I'm playing with Ignite as well, the wave would be stuck here. I'm down a level in EXP. How do I ever get that level up? So then my opponent is always going to be a level ahead on, of me in terms of EXP. Plus, I died. So then it's going to be 600 gold up in terms of EXP, and then also an item up, right? Yes. So you kind of see the problem that you could lead into, and this just snowballs. League yes. is a very a snowball heavy game. Okay. Um, so so even though it's a very small detail, me using my Q here is a mistake. And now how I how do I fix this? I stop hitting this Mian consciously because I want to try and sync my cooldowns with my level up towers. Oh, okay. But is it, he knows you're gonna level up. It's not about leveraging some kind of element of surprise. You just want to make sure that you've got both at the same time. True, but like. I'll tell you right now, you'd be surprised with how many people don't know this core concept of what mean exactly people level up on. Oh. Up until masters, I, in fact, I've coached master players even that did not know. They, they know the level one and level two timer, and then they don't know anymore. They don't know level three, they don't know level four, they mm. don't know the level six timer. So it is actually like just knowing this and starting to apply it to your own gameplay, it will help you out in short term, right? But gradually, as you make this a habit, because you're going to start using this as like a subconscious thing you're gonna know oh this means gives me level two this means gives me level three like yeah, yeah, the more yeah. you focus on it you'll be an ingrained habit and you will always bring that into whatever champion you play whatever game you play as long as you play mid or top of course because on bot lane you play with two players so sure. your level ups are a little bit different yeah but for mid and top it's the exact same thing so here and this is another detail so you are right um if i were to posture and stand here you'd agree with me that this all of us never walking up because it's a very aggressive posture right yeah but instead of that, I'm kind of hiding my intention by standing backwards here, knowing that this me would give me level two. And what I hope to achieve is that Olaf would walk up to go for maybe these lasses or just get closer to my range. Mm, and this, okay. but this, of course, is already a little bit more in depth. This is what we require to, I guess, us. Yeah, you're posturing, but posturing, yes. You're posturing unaggressively to give him the sense, false sense of safety, just in case he's not being mindful and he's autopiloting. Yes, exactly like that. And it actually makes sense that a lot of people aren't like super aware about the exact numbers. Uh, I didn't know the numbers too. The game doesn't explain it to you. And I find League very suitable for just jumping in and getting into it and just playing, right? The game yeah. itself doesn't tell you a lot of these intricate details in the client. Uh, and it's not difficult to start playing the game immediately. So I see like the, the mass appeal too of why you know League is the biggest MOBA because it's very approachable to just start playing and not everyone's going to nerd out about these details. So uh, I understand. So yeah. now now you're posturing a bit more aggressively, but is that because that melee creep is on the cusp of death and you're already exactly. planning his demise? It's dying. In fact, I wanted to auto it, but I stopped my auto because it would give me more range to be closer to him. Oh. Olaf ended up walking up for the mean, but oh. now I have my level two. I have my cooldown. Wait, and even happens? though Olaf is a stronger champion, I get a trade like this. Oh, sorry. Uh, I momentarily lost uh, vision because my demo mode game ended. No worries. Uh, okay, so I'll, could, could you I'll, show I'll, that again? Yeah. Oh, so you actually chose not to go for the last hit. Yes. To get Con more distance on him. Interesting. Exactly. So here I got more distance and that gave me an opportunity to get a beautiful trade and I back off again. Um, simply because I don't want to walk out of the EXP range. Uh, maybe also to talk about that EXP range is susceptible. How do you say this? It's very large. It's larger than you anticipate. If I'm here, I'm probably big. still... Yeah. yeah, exactly. I'm still in the XP range for this. Um, I don't know how to explain it. It's more so a thing that you get used to by playing. You're like, oh, this was just out of range. Oh, here I'm actually in range. Sometimes I'll mess it up still. But the general consensus is... You know, if it's still in your camera view, you probably get the EXP. So, no, actually, that's also not true. Is it not something like 1200, mm -hmm. 1400 or so? Something like this. It, I know the range is like a full charged bar skew. It's a champion that has a projectile as his Q. Um, but basically, it's pretty high. Like here, I'd still be in XP range from here. Okay. Uh, yeah. off, uh, and your camera is covering part of it, but off the melee creep, is it? 
Yeah, the, the melee crit. crit oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you, uh, what would you say that the XP is worth more than the gold? Yes, um, especially in the early game. Right. Um, EXP snowballs infinitely harder than gold in the early game. Especially and since is... you're not going back. So the only way that you can add power is to get XP, right? Whereas gold would require you to recall. Exactly. And if so, there is a trick that I do very often. If I'm stronger level one than my opponent, yeah. is what I do is I try to zone them from the first three melees worth of EXP while still getting the EXP myself. So we both lose the gold, uh -huh. but I gain the EXP and the, he loses it. The first three? Yes. So you're so, just starting to trade against them behind their own range. Yeah. Casters? And again, you, you so this is a very like we, we we won't go here because it's a very you know hard concept. You can only do this in certain matchups yeah. and with certain champions. Uh, for example, I couldn't do it Revenant to Olaf because Olaf is a stronger champion. If it was like a Yorick or an Aurelia, I could do it. So, so basically, what I would do. If you're strong enough, extra strong, you can absorb the caster damage. No, you actually, so what you do is the th first three, they're just standing like his, right? This means we'll meet in the center yeah. and we'll start hitting each other. Yeah. And what I do is I'd be standing here. Now, if my opponent would just walk to the wave here, if they are a weaker level one champion, I could almost kill them with my champion. If I'm a Darius, if I'm a Riven, I would just kill them even through the minion damage, yes, in that scenario. Ah. But very often what will happen is your opponents won't walk up to the wave, they'll stand behind the wave. And then what I would do is I'd walk them uh, to them, push them away with, you know, with an aggressive posture and push them out of exp range whilst remaining in exp range myself and then all these six melees would die almost at the same time ah. i get the exp he does not and if we look at this careful for the flashbang look at this list if he is three melee means down worth of exp on every wave i'm always going to be a level higher than him right because he's going yes. to need three additional melee means on oh, every yeah. wave before his level up so i'm permanently up in exp Meaning up a uh, I'm up a level. It's it's just very hard to approach. So that's why EXP does snowball a lot harder than gold, especially in the early game. How do the ranged casters not hit you? The the point where you drew the second yellow circle it seemed to me like within 500 range of the range casters. If these casters are aggroed onto minions, only if the minions die will they re-aggro. Unless I hit... So how mean aggro works, right? Is if these minions are aggroed onto, let's say, this minion, yes. they will not re-aggro until this minion has died. Oh, even um, if you attack an enemy champ next yeah, to them. Un exactly. Unless I attack an enemy next to them with either... A with a single target ability or attack. So the what? thing is, oh. if I driven Q them, it's not single target, I will oh. not draw minion aggro. Oh, if I, okay, okay. If I auto attack them, attacks and single target targeted spells. Yeah, so auto attacks and single target uh, spells, which very often count as auto attacks as well. So, for example, have you played Gangplank? Uh, no, not yet. Okay, uh, Aurelia is a good example. You played Aurelia. So, if yes, you, Aurelia right. kills somebody, it actually counts also as an auto attack. You will draw me an aggro. Oh, okay, okay. If I Riven queue them, which is an AoE and it's non targeted, I will not draw me an aggro. Ah. Uh, if it is single target, but it's a skill shot, it may count as an aggro? Uh, let me think, because the thing is very often... So, for example, um, if it's like an Ezreal Q, it actually counts as an auto attack. I'm pretty sure you still get let, me an aggro. Let's say okay. Scion E. Uh, no, which... you, you, no, you will not get me an aggro from Scion E. Even though it will only impact one target. Actually, do you? Well, the thing is, wait, do you draw me an aggro from Scion E? I'm actually not sure. Got him! <laughs> I'm trying to think, but the, the 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 problem with it is that very rarely you'll be landing your E onto your opponents, because um, there should be means in front of it. You know what I mean? Because if you want to hit your E as on as sign on somebody, wait, let me think. I think it doesn't draw aggro. That's what I because it's an E ability without point click. It's not an auto attack. No, you probably will not draw me an aggro. Unless it's an auto attack, so like a gangplank Q and Aurelia okay, so Q, a, a those are auto attacks. A modified auto attack generally does auto attacks do, and I'm working under the assumption that spells generally don't, so long as they're not auto attack modifiers. And exactly. Then it's just going to be like just find out, right? Like just try it and find out, and then you'll learn more. Yes. Okay. But to 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 add to this, so here what I was saying is I usually will push them away with my posture, right? If they Understood. want to fight, I'll fight them because my damage. Like it, my sustained damage in the early game is higher than his champion plus the caster means. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Even if they were to aggro you, exactly, you, you would find that you have enough of a level one advantage to play it that way. Understood. Yeah. But you shouldn't utilize this trick 
I'll let you know what you're doing because it can really backfire. No, I'm gonna try it. <laughs> okay, I mean, just, <laughs> I fear. just you're gonna have to do the champion like Riven in a match that you hard win level one. No, no, I'll of course, you'll only through failure. I'll try it on everything. I don't mind. It, it will produce yeah. a good clip even if it fails. Like now, yeah. I want to try the concept. <laughs> yeah, let's try this Garrett Tutorials. It's really good if you want to lose the game. No, but okay, let's move on. Next concept. Yeah, so, yeah, here, yeah. um, I'm kidding, of course. Uh, so to we saw this trade. Instantly back to you, see if you've memorized it. When do you hit your level 3? Uh, you hit your level 3 after two full waves and two melee creeps. There you go. So I need two minutes right now, right? Yeah. And I'm going to utilize the exact same concepts where I am conscious of the fact that Olaf would need to push these four minions plus two minutes before he gets his level 3, yes. right? Yes. So I'm way stronger. Yeah. Now, another important concept that I want to talk about here yeah. is whilst I'm pushing my wave, and um, basically I'll put it like this, Every wave in League of Legends needs a plan. In the sense that I want to be able to think ahead. That is my end goal while I'm laning. Similar to how you think ahead, you know, with a tournament playing chess. With League of Legends, what you can do is you can always think a wave in head, ahead. So you're never playing in the moment. You're always yeah. making a plan in advance. Yeah. Right? So how do we do this? The first step is checking where your next mini wave is at. So whenever I am laning, I'm always checking my mini map to see where my next mini wave is at. Because ultimately, if my mean wave is here, that's also where enemy mean wave is at. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, of course. And then I want, uh, uh, so with that core concept understood, I want to time very often, uh, like, uh, how do I put this in good words? I want to time that this mean wave gets into the position where it wanted to be given the plan that I have, in the sense that if I wanted to, uh, uh, well, actually, we'll get into an example so I can show it with an example because now I just have to visualize it, which I think is harder. So yeah. I'll get to do the example later. Sure. Um, so here, let's talk about this example. This is the third wave right here. And we spoke about the fact that I need two melees before uh, level three, right? Yeah, or three ranged, I guess. Uh, yeah, but it's very weird because you're... All They're these already dying. Yeah. are going to hit these melees, right? Sure, so it's sure. very rare that you're going to hit like the cannon or the casters first. Uh, the it's... cannon is very hard to kill, but how does it figure out into the level three? How does it figure into the level three uh, power spike? Would it be like one siege is already level three or not? No, uh, I actually had a game like this. I, it was like my first game out of a thousand games where it actually happened. I had the <laughs> cannon before any of the melees died and I did not hit my level three. I think a cannon oh. is almost one and a half or one or three quarters ah. worth of melee means so two melees are more than one cannon understood so it would still so have I... to be a cannon and a ranged or a cannon and a melee to actually level up i see how did that happen one in a thousand how did you kill the the cannon before anything else i don't even remember it was so weird <laughs> the, the, the me and aggro was just very weird and i think i like i think something must have happened where i like hit him and his means started, like, his melee means aggroed onto me, and then I, like, dragged them away, oh, something yeah, like this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How, how far will they chase? Uh, until you lose aggro, so you're either out of the range or you're walking to a bush. That's maybe interesting to know as well. You drop me in aggro by getting out of vision. Could you, in walking... theory, pull their melee creeps back behind their own tower, given where you're paused now? Let's say, like, if that happened, like, you aggro the three melee, you go all the way through their tower, you've got some kind of tower dodge mechanics, and those three minions end up going behind his tower, their siege and their three ranged die, and the three melee are still chasing you, in theory? In theory, yes. They can change you infinitely as long as you let them. Mm, I see. If you if you keep them aggro to you and you stay in their range, uh, they will stay aggro to you. Can you bring them to mid-wave? I could. Would yeah, you? I wanted to. <laughs> oh, that's no point. That's not like... <laughs> if you find that side quest in playing League of Legends, you're playing a different game. That, uh, that, there's, that's going to take you like a minute, and I don't think it achieves anything. Uh, maybe there's an achievement for it on the Riot client, but okay. Uh, Actually, I think dragging them to mid, you probably couldn't, because you'd have to like keep them interested, which won't happen, unless you can like build terrain as well. So they, generally speaking, won't follow you to like a different lane. But you can keep them aggroed for, for a while, I guess. I, to be fair, this okay. Let's put it this way. I find it a very interesting question. I just, I actually don't have the answer. I don't know how, how far they would change. I've never tried. I thought maybe in like some past tournament meta, there was some kind of extreme funneling tactic where both the top laner and the bottom laners are like just bitch to the mid, and everyone's bringing everything to the mid, like all their waves. Yeah, but it, I mean, it doesn't work out with time because you would miss like so much waves. I, yeah, just... you. Yeah, you missed the, the two next wave, probably. <laughs> yeah, probably. Okay, so ridiculous, but okay. Uh, so the siege creep is almost to melee. 
Uh, yeah. Okay, and we're back on track. So the next two melee, you get level three. Yeah. So here is also where I've been making my plan. So here you see the next wave is spawning, right? Yeah. So here I'm making my plan on this wave. So what would I want to do? Hit the I would want his next wave to be able to walk through this lane so yeah. I can farm it in a relatively comfortable spot. Does that make sense? What did you just draw? Uh, an arrow, right? I like wanted to walk. Well, what like, did you draw oh. in your base? <laughs> like did this year? Did I draw something weird? Uh, bad, maybe, I maybe it depends. My bad. My bad. Uh, I was my... trying to make a circle, like a square around this. Yeah, it was kind of a square. Let's call okay. it a square. But okay. uh, we'll a square. so uh, again, what do you want their fourth wave to? Um... Could you repeat? Because I got distracted. Yeah, my bad. So I want this next wave, his next wave, to be able to walk through the lane so mm -hmm. I can farm it in a relatively comfortable spot. And by through the lane, you mean outside of tower range? Yeah, so I would want his next wave to be able to meet here somewhere. Okay. And that means I would need to leave at least one of his means alive so that my means stay here so that the minions mm. can meet here again around like, this melee line. Yes. Right? Because ultimately, if I let the means, like you have to visualize it here, I can't really farm it because it's too close to his turret. Yeah, and that okay. would put me in a position where I kind of have to choose. You know, if I'm laning, let's say I'm in Olo's position right now, I'm laning here. I'm super vulnerable to ganks, first of all. And it's very hard for me to crash it into his turret because if I use my abilities on the minions, he can use his abilities on me. Ah. And if I try to let it that way, I'm just losing means and he can permanently freeze it. Can't you permanently auto attack? Like, do you have to use the your abilities? I can, but it's way slower that way. Yeah, it's Like, slow. it will take a lot of time. Yeah, so okay. here... My plan would be to slow push this wave mm -hmm. to allow his wave number four to walk through the lane, push both waves, get it to crash into his turret, and reset. Okay. Uh, that's what we refer to as a fourth wave crash. So what are you um, going to leave alive? Sorry? Uh, are you planning to like leave something alive in order to hold it here? Yeah, I'll, I'll just start slow pushing. And whilst I'm slow pushing, I'm going to look to see if I can utilize my level three timer. Mm -hmm. So the timer which I get level three, I'll look for a trade opportunity with that. And then what I would do is just slow push this wave. By the time that this minion wave arrives, I would realistically want maybe one or two means to stay alive. So I'll slow push, but not full slow push, like I'll be pushing. Um, and now, of course, this is kind of multitasking in the sense that you have to get familiar with how fast minion waves walk into your lane. I don't know the exact timer for me. It's like, it's um, subconsciously, I know the timer, give or sure. take in my head, right? Sure. Um, but the minions, uh, the, 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 the speed which, in which they walk to the lane has been buffed recently. Ah. So that, as a result of that, um, it's a lit, like, it is way faster than you anticipate. So we could count it, for example. It's 240 right now. You can see how fast these minions would actually come into the lane right here. Oh, we're going to skip on this. Okay. You see, they're already here, right? Uh... So let's go back here. It's, it's, it's very fast. So yeah. I'm, I'm dealing with the stream delay, so I'm trying to see if I oh, of course. see what yeah, you meant uh, yet. 240, and I don't think I see your game timer. Is it top right under your webcam? It is, my bad. I'm sorry. Yeah, it is. Now you can see it, I believe. Okay, so I think I have about five seconds. Oh, yeah, okay. So 240, and they left at, did you say 215? Yeah, the, the, so no, they'll leave at like 240 is when the last minute has spawned, give or take. So you see here with my camera movement, you see oh, I'm yeah. moving my camera here quickly to verify where the mini wave is. Oh, like yeah. You can check it on your minimap, but I also check my camera to, sh to explain to everybody. Oh, so yeah, well, yeah. basically, I want to start pushing this wave, but not too fast because my intention here is to do a 4 5 crash. Yeah, okay. Okay. Now, so uh, to get back to the point we're initially making is I get my level 3 from just two minions, right? Yep. So I'm doing the same thing here. I know I'm consciously strong and I want to keep my cooldowns up in sync with my level of timer it's only two melees yep. and in the meantime i'm having a relatively um passive posture to bait to olaf to walk up for a last hit. that would be my goal because ultimately i'm i'm way stronger than olaf so here same concept i'm eyeing that he's either gonna walk up for this last hit or this last hit he ends up doing so so now i know this is the mean in which i hit my level three i use my dash in a aggressive manner like this and then i'm able to get close and as a result of that just by utilizing my level two timer and my level three timer, I've won the lane against a realistic bad matchup. Interesting. You used your splash damage to both confirm the last hit, the gold, the XP, and get close to him at the same time. Uh, super optimal. Yeah. And let's say Olaf would not have walked up here, right? Mm -hmm. So let's go into the same scenario. And let's say Olaf does not walk up here and he would not die. Yeah. What I would do instead then is slow push this third wave that I was talking about. And then I would hard push the fourth wave 
as fast as I can and instantly recall. Oh, and yeah. What would happen then is the, the rubber banding or the bounce would initiate, right? Yes. But Olaf would not have enough time to push the fifth wave before I am back in time. Yes. If I've pushed wave four fast enough. Does that and, make sense? Can you visualize it? Yeah. And, and that's true, even though you don't have teleport, just because you've bought so much extra time. Exactly. So if I've slow pushed this wave and hard push wave four consciously as fast as possible and instantly recall, so I don't lose any additional seconds, I would be back in time. Because Olaf is going to have to collect two waves under his turret first. Yes. And then he's going to have to, and then he's going to have two options. He can either recall, but that would be suboptimal because the wave is pushing away from him, right? Yes. Which would mean that I always get a lead because when I, once I get back to lane, I'm going to have less means, meaning his wave is always going to push towards me. Plus, by the time that he gets back, it's going to be close to my part of the lane, meaning that I'm going to be heading EXP and have a favorable wave position. Yeah, he would have to like push the third wave as well, but that's already approaching the time you're coming back and then exactly. it's going to be hard for him to leave as well. And then I come back with extra items yep. so he can't fight me anymore. Now, the reason why I love to do this on a fourth wave crash, because you could argue, why don't you do this with a third wave crash, right? Yes. So you the don't have problem, enough gold yet, I guess? You do actually have enough gold. So okay. if you do a fourth wave crash and you farm perfectly, you have around 650 gold. Um, actually, we can talk about that too. So a cannon minion wave gives you around 200 gold. So melees give 21 gold each, casts give 14. So this is 42 and 60, right? So 42 and let's say 60. So normal minion wave is around 100 gold. And the cannon wave gives you, uh, so the cannon minion gives you around 60-ish gold as well. So you're around 170 gold. But the thing is, I always say around 120 and 200 because you also take time with farming these minions, right? So give or take. This wave will give you 120 gold. This is a normal wave. And the cannon minion wave will give you around 200 gold. So 200 what do you mean take wave? time? There's no uh, trickle in, gold, is there? Well, you, you get gold just by existing in the map. Oh, there's trickle gold. Okay. Yes. So look, if I, if I stand here, look, I'm randomly going to have 300 gold. You see? I just go and go permanently. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, to, to get back to that, if I do a third wave crash, I will be sitting, if I farmed very efficiently, around 450 to 500 gold. And a fourth wave crash would leave me with 650 gold. But the, the main issue when doing a third wave crash is that if I've done a third wave crash, what level would I be mm. when I recall? 3.4, I guess. Yeah. So I'd be level three and a half, right? Yeah. But then my opponent is still going to be in lane whilst I've recalled. Yeah. By the time that I get back, he's already gotten wave priority. So he's going to have a bigger minion wave and level four. Mm. So even though I have an item worth 350 gold that I'm stronger than him with right if he has a full level over me plus an extra medium wave that would mean that he's still stronger than me but and if you do the same with the fourth wave yeah he does not get level five from wave number five does he not no because he needs he gets level four by the like so for example i'm gonna hit level four here by this wave and almost the entire next wave remember i get level four from the first from from this wave right here i need three melees and one caster to get my level four. Oh yeah. Uh, so he's not gonna hit level five. Only like he needs like around two full more waves to hit his level five. Ah. But then if I do a did, fourth wave did crash, did we cover the level five in the notepad? No, I don't actually know it right now. I I believe I don't know the exact timer because the the thing is very often the level five timer is super um, awkward because very often between let's say level three, four, and five, you will be losing some type of exp. Very yeah. Often. Okay. So you unless have... you don't, yeah. you. I just have level six timer because this one is still, I actually don't know the level five out of my head, but I have noted down that level six is exactly at around 5.15 timer. And this is a um, timer in the game. Uh, your webcam because... is now covering notepad a bit. You can make it a bit s smaller, uh, maybe the notepad. Where do I put my webcam? Oh, you can I'll just like make the notepad uh, minimized and center it in the screen. And yeah, then you have to keep move... more. Sure. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'll just do it manually. I prefer it this way. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Okay, um, uh, so level five is not as uh, precisely worked out yet, and then level six, roughly five fifteen timer in the game. So yeah. because five takes like two more waves, maybe uh, that's why it's the best potential uh, time to go back yeah. right after. Yeah, I would four. say in around eighty percent of your games, you're, you're not even gonna have this exactly because you're bound to lose some exp whilst you're recalling, especially if you play with ignite. 
You're bound oh, to lose like yeah. one or two melee's worth of EXP. Yeah, and Igniter teleport is preferential style or mostly based on the champ? It's based on the champion plus the matchup that you play. Yeah, yeah. And on the very high level, it's also dependent on the jungle champion that you have um, oh, yeah. with you. So, for example, if I'm playing Riven, I like to play Ignite pretty much every game. However, if I play a very bad matchup, paired with a very bad early game skirmishing jungler, I would take teleport anyways. Oh, yeah, makes sense. Okay, so to get back to this example, now, it was a lot of visualizing, but I think you actually understood it very well with the response that you were giving. You see now that, let's say the Olaf had not died here, a fourth wave crash would still put me in a position where I actually get ahead 100% of the time. I repeat, please. So, if the Olaf had not died here, and I had successfully done a fourth wave crash, oh, yeah. I utilized my tempo to instantly recall, I put Olaf in a position where, regardless of what choice he makes, I would get ahead 100% of the time. Oh, yeah, yeah, I get it. And, and and this is all a result of how I utilized or play out my first four waves, right? Yep, every every wave built upon, uh, built upon the next. Exactly. So let's say Olaf then decided to stay and I come back to lane. And sure, he has a little bit of main advantage, but I would have pretty significant item advantage. So that would give me a favorable position then. And then, of course, the junglers will play into the game as well. We'll talk about the junglers in a second. Yeah, it's going to create like another level that it's really hard to cover mathematically. <laughs> yeah, but now you kind of understand why um, XP is so important. Level yeah. timers are so important. Um, early game crashes have... Uh, we'll talk about, so for example, 4 5 crash is the best one to do because you put your opponent yep. in a position where they're forced to make a bad choice. Unless they have TP, by the way, because then they could always just collect the two waves reset and TP back, but then at least you force them to use their teleport. Uh, we'll also talk about second wave crash, third wave crash. We'll go a little bit more or less in depth on those. Um, but ultimately, uh, one thing that we learned from this as well is how important priority actually is. Yes. And so you pretty is... much always want priority. Yes, you would want it if you can. Um, in a sense that if your matchup allows it or if your opponent allows it. So there's two ways to approach this. Um, let's say Aurelia Jax matchup, the one I showed earlier. Mm -hmm. Like I told you, in theory, it's a bad matchup, right? Yes. Theoretically, if I play against somebody equal skill, it would be a better... It, like, it's a heart-winning matchup for him in the early game. But execution is always going to be different in every game. You're going to play against a different player that might not have the same knowledge. Or your opponent could have a different setup in the sense that he has a different starting item or he has different summoners or even different runes, for example. He could mm -hmm. be running Lethal Tempo or Grasp on a champion like Jax. So... The thing is, there's so many intricate things in League of Legends, and that is why it's also a game that revolves so much around knowledge and then execution. Because you could play the same matchup, but dependent on you know how your opponent plays or the setup that they're running, the matchup is still completely different. Are you always aware of your opponent's runes? Do you check that diligently every game? Yes. So um, with the knowledge, or with, with the, like the mindset that I say that the first four waves are by far the most important, I kind of have a plan or like a structure with how I approach my lane in the early game. So I can write, walk through that quickly. So basically what I always do is I scout my opponent's setup. So there, I, I I'll check their runes. And I'm not going to be able to do that yet, but I really enjoy getting like a peek into high level league play where I'm confirming, yes, you are 100% aware of every rune summoner spell that they have. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll put it this way. You can go into external sites and actually see everything that they have, but uh, you can't see that when you're in loading screen. You'd only see, ah. for example, Grasp plus Inspiration. So I don't know exactly what they're taking in Grasp, and I oh, don't so know you... exactly what they're taking in Inspiration. Oh, you see. could go to an external site, and it would show you exactly uh, whilst you're in loading screen, but I don't do that. Okay. You could do that, though. So, and then... Okay. Yeah. Yeah, there's some third-party apps too that give a little bit of extra info in Dota. Some people think it's gray area. Some people use it. Some people don't. Uh, sure, uh, I get it. Yeah, and then I check their starting item uh, because ultimately, if they have a Dorn shoot, they're less aggressive. If they have a D shoot, they're more aggressive. Yeah. And um, lastly, uh, and the second thing is, I look where both junglers are pathing. Uh, so we can talk a little bit more about jungle path now. If I verify that I've talked about everything in, let's say, our matchups, do you have any questions about the topic that we just talked about? Because it's a little bit in-depth, right? But ultimately, yeah. you're going to be applying this to every champion. Yeah. Um, 
some matchups or some champions that you play are weaker in the early game. Some champions are stronger in the early game, right? If you're playing Olaf, Darius, Riven type champions, you will very often be successfully able to play for that priority simply because you are a strong early game champion. Similarly, if you play champion like Nasus, Garen, or Singed, Kill, or even Irelia, you're very often going to be at the opposite side. You're going to be pushed in in the early game. Mm. This theory still applies to both uh, sides in the sense that if you are a stronger early game champion, if you can get those level of times, you're stronger. If you're a weaker champion, you can still look for it. Or you kind of reverse the knowledge and you try and avoid giving them the opportunity for a third faith crash, a fourth faith crash rather, et cetera, et cetera. But that's going too in depth, so we'll keep it a little bit more on the surface here. Yeah, I I have four statements and questions, I guess. I hope I, I remember them. Uh, one is like, in order to counter the fourth wave crash strategy you talked about while building up wave priority in the first four waves, uh, how possible is it for you to sneak in and do a cancel on their recall? Uh, very possible. So um, let me see if I have a direct example. I probably do of a game that I've played today as Aurelia, where I've successfully avoided them getting their four five crash in. And which how many actually... creeps would you lose by doing that? And how, what's the tipping point you think of value in terms of gold or XP <laughs> loss on creeps as you're being pushed in, as they have priority, where you say, I know they're going to go for a recall. I'm guessing it's this push. I'm willing to sacrifice X amount of minions in order to achieve this recall cancel. Okay, that was okay. That was a lot of questions at once, but I, it's all I think packed it's better in to one question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's all packed in one question, exactly. So I think it's better to showcase an example so I can show all of the examples at once. There's so, always someone in my chat and now in your chat too that's like, he's overthinking. No, <laughs> this is not overthinking. Yeah. I'm going to go to an interesting example because ultimately I'm going to be having to play a champion where I lose priority in the early game. Okay, so yeah. are you familiar with Trundle? No. Okay, so let's talk about the setup here. So I can also kind of walk you through my idea of how I approach this Could early game. Could you adjust game. your webcam? Oh, yeah, sorry. See. Um, so here we're playing against a Trundle in the early game. And do you see his rune right here? This, uh, this yellow shining rune. Contribution to the team's map vision dominance. No, uh, no, no, oh. not this. Just, oh, okay. just this rune, not the text that I'm hovering because I'm in the vault right here. Okay. Shaquille Oatmeal, dude. He has a <laughs> rune here next to his teleport, right? Yeah. It's lethal tempo. Basically, every auto attack it does, attack speed. he gets extra attack speed, and on six attacks he also gets extra rage. Okay. I have the same rune. However, he has his Q, which is an extra auto attack. Plus, it's also auto attack reset, so he could do auto, Q, auto, and I mean, he's already gotten three stacks. So he'll be full stacks when you're still four. Yeah, maybe around that. Yeah. So basically, I cannot face the champion in the early game. Okay. There's no way for me to get my passive because I only have one ability, all those means are low. So here, my mindset is already I'm going to have to allow myself to get pushed in okay. so that I don't get to the position where I'm forced to fight. He could even 2v1 me and the jungler in the early game simply because of how strong he is. Uh, what was his hero name? Trundle. Uh, oh, he's Trundle. Okay, yeah. And you're yeah. really yeah. Yeah. So here, I'm setting myself in this position. Now, very interesting. Why do I sit in this bush? Because if I'm Trundle, I would sit in this bush. Why would I do that? Uh, because you want to immediately start dueling your opponent yeah. uh, from behind where they don't expect it so they cannot run away. And then you can zone them out from the melee uh, creep experience exactly. like you taught me. Ex yes, exactly. But so you go again, here, you're checking if he's there already? Yeah. Basically, because if he'd be standing here, what I would have to do is, whilst my means are walking, and this is already going to go into higher levels, I'd have to at least leave a ward here. So maybe my means aggro onto him, and then I could walk with my means, or I have the knowledge that he's here, and then I, what I would actually do is maybe walk around even to still get an EXP range. This is way more than depth. Um, and when you because, say walk around, you mean the inner part of the map? Yeah, like I, oh, I, I see your minimap drawing now. Yeah, I would have but did done it like in an advanced position so that I can kind of time it so I can always be in a position where I can still try to catch the first three minutes worth of XP. Oh, yeah. What some arena players even do against like a really hard losing matchup is they stand here in the alcove oh, so their yeah. opponent can find them what? and they can get to the XP range. In the alcove, you can reach yes. over for you, XP. You can, but like once. So for example, if Trundle's standing here, right? Yeah. Oh, and okay, I'm in the alcove. I, I thought you meant the top over the he, triangle bush in the jungle. Okay, now that alcove. He would walk like this. Yeah. Yes, he would walk like this. But it, this is super in depth. 
this this Rondo is a diamond two player, so he's a realistically high elo player, right? Yeah. Uh, but he's not even cons like aware of the fact that he should be zoning me from the first three mains worth of EXP. Like I said, these are concepts that are not really utilized by a lot of players simply due to lack of knowledge. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, if this guy knew, he could make my la like lane here a living hell. Yes. Because right? yes. if I lose the first three means worth of XP, my lane is so obnoxious to play. Yeah, he's either autopilot or unaware, or yeah, yeah, just not aware of those concepts yet. Yeah, and he starts pushing the wave, so that's fine for me here. Why? Because the faster he starts pushing the minions towards me, I'm not at risk of being zoned from XP, and I, if I at least get the XP, I'm always happy. Yeah, so he's building up regular lane prio, perhaps yeah. to prep for the fourth wave shove. Uh, yeah. and recall timing etc but you can do even better to get ahead yes, as him exactly. against you yeah okay so now he's just getting priority um uh, question maybe why an did it die in two hits it looked like it had three bips of health the ward uh it does if you hit it three times the ward will disappear it looked like you hit it twice uh i think i hit it once and by the time i was gonna hit it one. the second time it disappeared it has why like did, uh why does if he it plays disappear? yeah sorry uh why does it disappear so if you use a ward, if you plant a ward, there's like, I think, two seconds of the ward still being visible, and then it goes invisible. Oh, so it's still there. Yeah, it's still there. Oh, okay. The ward is still there. But if you kill it within those two seconds, the ward is gone, and you get the gold. <laughs> okay, okay. So that vision that you have there, that is typical vision that the game gives you, letting you know that you last saw a ward there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, little... And you can, if you see somebody place a ward, if you like actually see the ward, you can click on it and you'll see that timer there. That timer. Uh, oh, that's yeah, how long this it lasts. Timer. Yes, this is how long the, the ward will last. Do you have to click it? Uh, yes, you just click on it with either H click or G click. So you just like click on the ward. Uh -huh. Like ping, ping on the ward is enough. Click on the ward or ping on the ward. So how did you get this timer? You did an H or a G click? No, I. Uh, this is an automatic thing in the game. I believe if you stand in the same bush and you hit it once, so here I actually hit it, that also counts. Ah. And let's say I, I would see Zy like enemy bot laner place a ward here, yeah. but somebody's also like my teammate is also in that bush. I could ping on it, I get five gold, and the timer will show as well. You get gold for just pinging it like Minesweeper flag saying there's a bomb here. Yeah, but you get five gold, and it's, it's negligible. Yeah, it's, it's not a lot. But yeah. it's still interesting that they try to incentivize you. Uh, with a little bit of gold to make players warn each other about wards. Yeah, 100%. Interesting, okay. So now I'm also going to talk a little bit more about the jungle passing in the early game. And so here's a very interesting concept. Um, Rengar, I left the ward here on his golems. And you see here that Rengar has four farm, right? Four farm. On no, my I, I don't know what that means. So oh, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was I was told that Riot standardized the amount of CS and farm to be four per camp, so you can no longer intuit where people have been based on the amount of jungle creeps that there are per camp. There is a truth in that, and there is also uh, yes and no. So let, let's put it this way. Every jungle camp gives you four CS. Yes. That's all the knowledge you need. So if you get a scuttle crap in a river, or a red buff, or a golem camp, or even a dragon or herald, they all give four CS each. Right, because people used to be able to uh, backtrack where you've been based on a number. Yes, but you can still do that. Oh. And that is why... So, so let's talk about jungle tracking then. Right? So let's talk about... Because I talk about here, jungle tracking. There's two habits that I use for jungle tracking. The first habit is leaving an early game ward so I know where enemy jungle starting position is. Mm -hmm. But I'm only able to do that if I'm either a strong level one champion or I knew where enemies were. So let's yeah. go back to this example. Otherwise I'm you would be suicidal meandering exactly. into their jungle. Yeah. But look, they were all here. You see, uh, they were all in my jungle. So as a result of this, I was actually allowed to walk here and place my ward down. And I placed it here because Rengar players always path on rep off into golems. It's a knowledge thing, but I won't yeah. go too in depth on this. Yeah. Uh, basically, if possible, and depending on the champion you play, for example, Riven, can do this almost every game because I can even jump over walls. <laughs> okay. Irelia will rarely be able to do this because you're arguably one of the weakest champions in level one. Ah, uh, okay. So if you're able to do this, it's amazing to do. And then the second trick is uh, counting jungle CS. So um, I'm very curious what you're going to say next because all I think it's going to show is four plus four plus four is 12, and that's not going to tell you anything. But you're okay. going to tell me something else. Let's go to this so we have a better overview of the map. Yeah. Right? 
So enemy jungle started here, and he's passing from this, till this, till this, and then he's gonna go into bot side, right? Um, the delay here is messing me up a bit. Uh, let me no refresh worries. the stream. I'm waiting. Oh, I can refresh the stream too. Okay, or so, you, you refresh the stream, yeah, yeah. yeah. So ABC, the three circles on top. So he started here, one, and then he went to this, right? Because he only had four CS. So he started red buff, and then he had, and then he had uh, this golem camp, right? So he'd be on eight. After this camp, he'd be on 12, 16, 20, 24, well, and 28. That makes sense, right? You're with me here. Yeah, I'll be with you once uh, once it catches up. So uh, yeah. 1, 2, yeah, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 20. Uh, 20 uh, so he does this is the, 28. He does the scuttle crap. Usually. I, I don't uh, know yet. Yeah, but this th this could clear. be a very standard order where you've exactly split the map in half. Yes, exactly. And this will very often happen. So in this scenario right here, uh, where we are at, you see that my jungler is starting at his rep buff and enemy jungler is starting at his rep buff as well so they're they're pathing opposite to each other yes. in the sense that one is pathing into top one is pathing into bot yeah so split map situation no invasion probably happening yet it could actually happen split map split map concept is is actually a concept but it's different this is what a split map would look like jungle is actually farming both top side or both bot sides this is not a split map this is just a standard clear so a you split call, map. You call split map where you take one quarter, which is your own half, and then one quarter of theirs, which is their yes, half. Yes, that yep. would be a map split because very often, let, let's say Rengar is doing these six camps and my jungle is doing these six camps. Now you see that the map is actually split in half. I mean, you can get, kind of put it this way that split in half too, but there can yeah. there can be more, like it's more so linear pathing and standard pathing. This is way more rare, and this is also way more scary. Because if a pathing happens like this, right, I have to be permanently scared of enemy jungler being able to gank me. Because he's so and near. Exactly, because he's but splitting the map, right? And my jungler will not come is, by. Is this your terminology or accepted terminology that when you talk about split map jungling, mm -hmm. is that you take half of theirs, half of yours? If you ask any high elo player what a split map would look like, this is what they would tell you. Oh, interesting. This, okay. is, a, this is a map split, yeah. Because in, in Warcraft 3, when split the map, usually you take your own half each. Or it doesn't discriminate which hemisphere it is uh, either north north south or east west so yeah uh, but i'll tell you this is again a more um how would you put it uh advanced concept i love them um, advanced <laughs> yeah but you're not going to see this very often because what very often happens in these scenarios is that uh, enemy jungler would actually start his clear in my jungle uh right yeah that, why not right yeah and then he goes to his own jungle and then my jungler has to be smart enough or has the knowledge because of early awards that he has to go to enemy bot side jungler. So yeah, now if my jungler would to path like this, he would make like a false trip otherwise. Exactly. Cause then he comes into his top side and somebody stole his presence. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, math split, it does happen. It's a little bit more uncommon though, but the, the, the main takeaway is that we need to learn how to properly catch or, or know how much, uh, farm people have. So, uh, the habit that we need to ingrain is this is the core habit every time a jungle shows on the map we need to press tab to ah. count the cs plus hover camera to see what buffs he has oh i see i am going to remember this for sure and also not going to be able to apply it while learning yes. new champs which is normal At right but i'm very glad acceptable. to learn about it Yes. Now, this is going to be a habit that is going to require a lot of time for you to build, right? But over time, you will make it a subconscious habit in the sense that every time you see a jungle map, oh, press tab, oh, yes, this, this amount of farm, yeah. that could mean this or that. So what's very common right now for junglers to do, for example, is they would do, uh, they would gank and they have 12 farm. So very, like the easiest level three pathing right now for a jungler to do would be like starting rap buff or even raptors. And then they do basically one side of their jungle and they gank either mid or bot. Uh, yeah. So then, then this gives them level three, right? Yes, they would give them level three. So then let's say uh, my Maokai here does these three camps and ganks bot. Yeah. He would have 12 CS and a rep off, right? Yeah. If I press tab and I verify that and move my camera towards him, I also know where this Maokai would realistically go next. Yes. He would recall and go into top side. Oh, I see. 
Because and uh, I know that. He, he doesn't want to walk through the junk terrain of the bottom half of your own jungle because it's already been cleared out. So I it's mean, not efficient yeah. to go there. He could, but very often after a gank like this, it probably wouldn't happen. But let's say like this. Let's say he does these two camps in gank Smith. And they had a successful gank. He'd probably just walk into the stop site. But at least I know where he's going to go. Right? Yeah, he's probably not going to go to the enemy right side jungle. Because yeah. it might already be gone by the time he gets there. And he has to walk through wilderness that's empty uh, could to be, get though. there. It could be, but yeah, that, that's of course that, that could be the case. But very often they'll just go to their own top side. So yeah, there's always the second level of mind games and, and the unexpected, but the first level is efficiency, and that's going to be the leading standard. Yeah, so and, and of course champions, right? Because you need to play a champion that could skirmish enemy jungle champion, of, of course, as well. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And and then priorities in lane because if you invade enemy jungle, you have to worry a lot about lane priority because ultimately the, his allies are usually, uh, generally speaking, going to be the first that can respond unless they have like a wave under their turret so they ah, don't want to leave yeah 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 this is going to be interesting when i later play bard support again i'll be looking at all those lane priorities <laughs> yeah you can to bard is whether... one of the best champions actually to do this type of gameplay because you're so fast on the map yeah okay so now coming back to this example i believe the first thing we talked about is how do i play your question was if enemy gets the priority how do i avoid the four five crash right yeah okay lovely so he's pushing me in but here I remember in the game as well is that this Trundle was making a very big mistake. Now, it's hard to spot it, but what Trundle is doing is he's both slow pushing and hard pushing. Well, he's not slow pushing and he's not hard pushing. Hmm. In the sense that he's slow, like he's kind of pushing this wave, right? It's a big wave. Yeah. But my third wave is about to approach. So now Trundle would have to crash this wave into my turret before my third wave would arrive. If he yes. wants to make this crash. So this all this is going to die. And he will have his big window where he's got nothing to do. After yeah, but the it would... third wave. Instead kind of, of, yes. But the problem that all of uh, the Trundle does here is, look, he's not fast enough. So he kind of has crashed it, but not entirely. This is not a clean crash. What I mean with a crash is that you want your minions to all aggro onto enemy turret. That is what a crash means. Oh. Are these means able to my turret? No, no, they're hitting creeps. Oh, so now he will be forced to farm under your tower because exactly the first target that they acquire is the creeps and they won't yes. re-aggro into tower. Why do you want and them to hit tower? It's not for the plates. It's to keep their wave alive. It's, it's to, yes, and it's to make sure that the bounce will happen. Because now what happens is, and this I refer to this as the happy spot, it's actually stuck in this position. In the sense that every time Olaf or Trundle tries to push this wave, you see this is not an efficient position for him to push because this is the exact same example that I tried to make you visualize in the Olaf example is now he can't really look to push these means efficiently, right? Because half of them are even going to be under my turret still. Yes. And as a result of that, he can't push it comfortably. Plus, he's always at the risk of getting ganked. And additionally, he's also um, has to be scared of me, right? He's not allowed to hit you and you can hit him for free. Yeah, because I'm that close to my turret. He can't yeah. retaliate, really. Yeah. So he's kind of put me in the happy spot here. That's how I refer to it. Because here, this is basically, as a weak side champion, the yeah. perfect position to play in. Because he can never really do anything to me. I can skill for free. I can try to sink the level ups for free. Now, another question you had is, so here he's done like a very early crash, right? Yes. What very often will happen as, happen as well is, uh, I used my ward here this time. But if you are you are a weak early game champion, I also told you that very often you will not be having your ward to use it for uh, scouting the junglers, right? Yes. What I do instead is whilst I'm getting pushed in, so let's say the waves are getting pushed in, as late as is possible as I can, I will won't give it away, but I'll ward this bush. Now by warding this bush, let's say the means end up crashing into my turret, I can maybe walk forward and cancel recall quickly and then get back. And I know that because I got this ward in this bush. Is this the number one recall bush just because it's near? Yeah, that, that's what people will recall in the most. And then the number two is the middle, the number three yeah. is the top, and the number four is like what? Hiding in the alcove for going back to tower. Yeah, but if you do that, by that time, the wave is probably like you lose around 15 seconds of tempo time if you're going to waddle back to your turn. Sure, sure, yeah. sure. Most so, people will recall here. Did you achieve this sweet spot or did he just completely mess up? Oh, you achieved it by not hitting creeps. That's it, right? Yes. And also by not, like I try to kind of block it with my body. You see how I'm kind of blocking the wave here with the means. I'm not instantly allowing it to walk into my turret. I'm waiting for my next wave to walk up here and holding his means kind of in this position. Does that the, make sense? The, the jiggle you did makes him makes, follow you left and right and you bought yeah, a Yeah, like a little bit, right? I just want to make sure. Without getting hit. 
Yes, but it, it's very like it's almost minuscule. This wave would also like you see this means are already here, kind of. Yeah, right? it would mostly they have would been never fine crash. anyway. But you bought another quarter second. Yeah, something like this. And yeah, again, this is more so Trundle making a mistake than me doing something. Correct. Sure, sure, sure. You let it happen though. Uh, you knew what's gonna. Happen. Yeah, and like here I said already, like whilst I was playing the game, I was explaining Trundle's already made the big mistake here because he's put me in this position right now. I can hold it here pretty much permanently, right? Like he ha does not have any pressure onto me. And also he can't get tempo for his own preferred recall. Yes. He says that like right now, if he wants to push this wave, which is which is what he's doing, right? He just hit level three, but I already matched my level three. So it's not really stronger. You see that if he wants to push in this wave, well, the next wave is already here. If so, you so were I'm stuck him, here. If you were him, right back to where you were shaking the wave and buying a quarter second, and you're Trundle, how do you fix and destroy the sweet spot? Like, very, is very good late? question. Very good question. This is a concept that it's like I basically here you've already made enough mistakes, you can't fix it anymore. Oh yeah. yeah. Right. He, so he can't go, he can't just go on the tower and start hitting the casters. No, because uh, no, he can't, because his means are not in the turret range exactly. Look, yeah, he would have to do all the here. work himself, but he, he yeah. can't just start using all oh, attacks he, and all his he, can, <laughs> he can't, right? Oh. So this is also why I never teach people how to play from behind. I teach people how to not follow behind. <laughs> why? Because you can't really teach somebody how to play from behind because you're more so left to the mercy of your opponent instead of being able to oh. do things yourself. There are, of course, things that you can do. You can minimize losses and there's certain mindsets. And of course, you can still do a lot of stuff. But in the general sense, right now, Trundle, can't really fix this. It's up to me how I want to manage this, right? Yeah, I could so not... the way for him to play it is to remain PMA and mute allies. Yeah, pretty much. Because <laughs> well, he can't gameplay his way out of it anymore. No. And now I also make a little bit of a mistake here to try and thin out too much. Um, because another concept that is very interesting, right? And talking about the junglers. Remember when I told you that Maokai is perfect from this to top, right? Uh, and, I'm not uh, seeing yet what, you're, yeah, uh, what you've and, drawn. Rengar is passing from here to here, right? So they have reversed the pathings. So just okay. waiting to oh, verify. Okay. Yeah, okay. If that's reversed <clears throat> pathing, then sure. Why yeah, is it I'll reversed? just call it reversed. Because uh, enemy genre is passing from top into bot, and my genre is passing from bot into top. Why is that reversed? Is it normally the other way reverse. around? Reverse. I mean, if they're both pathing in the same way, how would I call it? Let me see. Is oh, I see. I see. Oh, you're saying they are going in the opposite direction of exactly. each other. Exactly. Oh. Yes. Okay. Of, of the jungler perspective, yes. Okay, okay. I got it. So, to put this in a different words, right now, I am on the strong side, and my enemy top laner is on the weak side. In what does this mean? Of, in terms of jungler um, exactly. uh, threat. Exactly. So, here... Trundle knows that his jungler is pathing away from him. Yeah. Right? And I know that my jungler is pathing towards me. Okay. So, with that in mind, who benefits more from taking equal health rates? Oh, you. Yes. Yes. Right? Because of the jungle pathing. Yes. It's that simple. Because in the next one to two minutes, or maybe even 30 seconds, if Maokai just decides to run top here, which certain junglers would do, right? Level three ganks are very common. I have the good position simply because of the jungle pathing, too. So without even looking at anything else, I am also on the strong side here, simply because of the jungle pathings. Yep, makes sense. Okay. Um, and similarly, Jondo has to be more of like a more passive mindset, simply because he has to be consciously a little bit scared of my jungler. Maybe yeah. he doesn't even know where my jungler is at, but he knows where his jungler is at. Yeah. And this doesn't even this is very important to always understand in the first four waves. So I'm gonna flashbang everybody again. If we're talking about early game setup, right, and how we set up our first four waves. We're looking to scout our opponent's setup, ruin summoner starting item, and we also look where both jungles are passing, and then we can start making a plan on how we want to play with our waves. Yep. Okay. So jungles are very important to how you are going to play as well. Because again, if you're a strong side, you want to have the mentality that equal health rates are good. And similarly, if you're weak weak side, right? Let's say you're weak side and in a bad matchup, then you really have to be extremely careful, which will happen a lot of times. Yeah. Makes sense. And of course, uh, again, I'm storing this away for later when people are actually that good, uh, where junglers actually start ganking the right lane. Yeah, yeah, Which yeah. It's yeah. totally oh, of fine for me to keep two threads of reality mm -hmm. in mind. My reality yeah. right now in unranked shit league. Uh, and then, of course, also how the game is meant to be played. I, I love having both of those uh, concepts in mind. Also, a little comment is uh, in, in, in Heroes of the Storm, if you like die early, it's usually not that big of a deal. Uh, and if you mess up the lanes, it's usually not as big of a deal. It's so different here. 
and then like in dota there's a lot of death i would say the most death and it does matter but it can be come back uh pretty well with all kinds of different segues like you can go out of the lane do other things i'm getting the sense that like the early game here in league is very important there is a snowball potential and whether you see that as a negative or positive thing if you're looking to get better it just is you don't have to qualify it with being positive or negative that's how it is which means if you want to play better without judgment of the mechanic of the game being good or bad like in terms of game design that's the game you're playing so you should want to be the one that's ahead and use every wave to your optimum advantage just a little in between statement for people that know the multiple mobas yeah. I'm, I'm learning a lot from like how that works in early game in league yeah so i don't have the past experience i have actually played heroes of the storm a little bit myself but i found it to be like like i played it for a few games and i, I couldn't anymore that's just because of me i i'm i'm a one trick person in terms of my champions that i play very often i'll get to that too but i also i i, I have a problem playing up new games myself so Hey, uh, so I, I, I know all about much. grinding a single game. I used to look down or at least not look at any other game than Warcraft 3. Uh, may, maybe with uh, with age came some uh, taking interest in other games as well. So I totally get it. I've done a lot of one-tricking myself. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's my view right now as well. So it's also very interesting for me the, uh, to hear the other perspectives. But yeah, for League of Legends, with all the things we talked about, you can start recognizing that you know if something goes wrong here especially in a in like a bad matchup you can't really get back in the game unless your opponent is going to make a big blunder himself yeah so, so you you're early lose, you could lose in league in three minutes but you'll need to wait 12 minutes to do the ceremony of yeah, uh, I, forfeiting <laughs> yeah 15, 15 minutes actually i would go as far as to say that your game starts level one i could win my matchup level one by zoning my opponent on the first three minutes worth of exp because I mean, this is going to be very intricate. But what I can, what can happen sometimes is by zoning my opponents of the first three minutes worth of EXP and never hitting like uh, enemy means myself, I can make the wave drag down a little bit, and it actually makes it push towards me. So then my opponent is down in EXP and the wave is pushing away from him from level one, and the game's over. Yeah, it, that's that makes sense. Yeah, with what the game would me. be instantly over. Yeah. So now, um, who would you say has me in priority right now? Uh, he's got a seed screech, which is super tanky. Um, yeah. Let's see, your wave is approaching first because it's on your side. Let's see, does that matter? Mm, your wave approach first, which will give you, uh, the blue wave a little bit more of an advantage before his connects. But if I just look at these creeps, I would imagine that the seed creep is tanky and damaging enough that actually he has a bit of priority. Yeah, I could choose here. So that's a very so that's why it's also a tricky question. I can choose. I could allow mm. his means to kill mine, and it would be somewhat even. However, yeah. I could also kill these and keep these three alive, and then my means will walk past it, and then randomly, boom, I have nine means on my next wave. Yeah. So yeah. I can kind of I'm in a position here where I can choose to do what I would want. And so could he? Yeah. No, he can't. Why not? Well, he could. He could walk up here, but if you're in trouble shoes here, you're probably mentally a little bit scared of the jungle. You oh, don't want to play here, right? Because of that, okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I have, because I'm strong sided, you see here. So now, because I push this. And strong, have... si strong side meaning the jungle position relative exactly. to you, right? Okay. Yes. So, so that's now. Strong side, weak side. And this is common league term? Yeah, so, uh, yes, exactly. Okay. And now, because I have this mean advantage, again, I get my level four here first. Right? Boom, I'm level four, even though I'm playing a bad matchup. So that is also a result of the position that we were playing in. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like he pushed into me, but I was able to instigate, I guess, the rubber banding because he never got it to crash cleanly. And then because it bounces, I get the main advantage. Some means stayed alive. I started pushing next wave. I'm level four. He's not even remotely close to level four, right? Yeah. I missed my skill shots here, but the trade was still very good simply because <laughs> of the concept that I'm able to utilize my level of time. Yeah. Okay. Now I'll skip a little bit forward. I tried to crash the wave and I'm going to recall, but this guy tried to cancel me. They canceled me again. Uh, and then he I have up... so much delay now, by the way. I don't know if it makes yeah. sense to go to Google Meets and try to set up video there as well. Also, uh... with uh, regard to me playing a live game later and you needing to be uh, in time with me. Okay, sure. That sounds good. Okay. Let's, try let's try it, try okay? It. Yeah, let's see if we can figure it out. Okay. Okay, good. I have full screened your screen share. Lovely. Okay, 
So where did we drop out? Did you have any questions, or was it just we were here and then we were going to? Uh, and, and yeah, okay, no, you, we were fighting here, and then you said I have too much delay. Yep. Uh, now is I... there? A way? Oh, I can hide this, right? Let's hide here, because then you can see my cooldowns. Yeah. Please. Okay, lovely. Okay. okay, it is lower FPS, but much more live than before. Uh, I see game time uh, 405, 406, 407. Yeah, you're, you're, you're with me here. Then. Okay, great. Okay, here you can actually also for the first time see how much damage means it will actually do here. So I think it's an interesting okay. scenario, so even at channeling. level 4. How many creeps? He gave up a few creeps, but not the XP. He cancelled your recall. Uh, creeps are hitting him. You're hitting him. I'm hitting him too. And even though in the pure moment we wanted to probably be close, he took, I would argue, 200 melee dam uh, yes. lightning damage there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Huh. Okay, very interesting concept here as well. You see, you see here that I've done like uh, the lay. So this is wave number five that I've crashed here. So you see, I was not even close to level five, right? Oh, I have to let my cap out. Yeah, you're four and a half. Yeah. Okay. So um, I'm going to recall here. That would be my goal. But you see here, Rengar ganked bot with how much farm? Rengar ganked bot? Uh, he's getting right Rengar? now. He killed my AD carry. Is the doggy? Yeah, no, he's the he's the cat here. This one. Oh yeah, uh, that's a cat. Okay, I thought it was a. It yeah, oh, makes yeah. sense, I guess. So he has twenty four. Let me see, eight, twelve. So he's done uh, one half of the jungle without the scuttlebutt. Yeah, exactly. So he's yeah, exactly. So he's done two both sides. Let's yeah. call the side of the jungle, right? So he's done a full clear, but he still has to do his his scuttle. Okay. Okay. So um, what does that tell me? Mm, it tells you that the earliest he could gank you is probably in 45 seconds from now. Something like that, right? Because ultimately, Rengar is probably going to take the scuttle and then recall and then do what? Where is he going to go? This this is where my knowledge has a gap. I don't know when there's a respawn. I'm assuming maybe one camp on top respawned or not yet. Yeah, yeah. Basically, once he's done full clearing into bot side, you're correct. His top side camps will be respawning again. So ultimately, that is where he's going to open up. Uh -huh. again. So it might take one minute twenty seconds till he might show up in your lane, provided he does scuttlebutt and then refresh the top jungle camps. Exactly. But how do we know this? We know this because we saw how much farm he had when he showed here, mm. and we had the early game wards here to show his pathing. That's you why might, it's so important. You might also have known based on extreme champ knowledge, knowing how fast people farm out the jungle, because it'd be a bit weird if he had 12 CS now, considering it's 340 and he's ganking bot. True, but my Maokai only has 20 right now. Mm. And he's on the scuttle. So keep in mind, Rengar has already cleared the full jungle and is already ganking. And got a but kill. my Maokai hasn't even gotten this and is doing scuttle and is not even on 24 yet. He's still yeah, is that a three. skill issue or is that just how fast those champs respectively farm jungle? To be fair, I'm not sure how, exactly how fast Maokai farms, but I definitely because... argue that this guy has a little bit of skill issue because, yeah, he's very late. He, but he, also because you may not necessarily know, you might have knowledge gap yourself if you're uh, like a full top laner. Um, mm -hmm. Depending, you know, not everyone is challenger. It's easier to check on tab than to intricately know every single second timing that every champion might have yes. on optimal jungle clearing speed. So it makes I, sense. I don't know exactly how fast every uh, champion yeah. clears the jungle. I know some specifics, and I know that there are certain jungle champions that farm extremely fast. So some examples like Evelyn or uh, Brand right now or Velvet, they farm the jungle extremely fast. So mm. the, the, there are those examples too. But, but you can count to 28. Yeah. Yeah. So here, after I killed this... Uh, Shouldn't he uh, just have cancelled your recall once and then just uh, chilled? Yeah, he, sh he died here. He made a mistake, obviously. Because that's why he died as well, yes. So he should have mm. just cancelled my recall once, and then he should have just chilled, probably reset and TP as well, because he has TP as well, and we'll both be even, uh -huh. and we're about evens, yes, and then we're both happy. But yeah, he, he, saw this, he thought he saw Kim window here, and that's also because I'm very low mana, right? Yes. So, this is a rune that I'm running. You see these biscuits in my inventory? Yep. No, that's a healing Every 50 health, or...? No, it heals a percentage missing health and percentage missing mana. Instantly. Yes, instantly. Yeah, yeah. So the cookie and then is a little bait. bit over time. Yeah, so the cookie is very good whenever you're low resources on either mana or health. Yeah. Um, and you get three biscuits or cookies throughout uh, the game. You get one at minute two, one at minute four, and one at minute six. Oh, it's time based, so here, not, not minion yeah. based. No, it's time based. So here it's about to get minute four. Oh, so interesting. you get minute four. Can I'll you use both us. at the same time? Yes, I can. So here I use my first one. Right, boom, mine's response oh, yeah. of mana, so I can use my abilities. 
And then here, whilst I'm fighting him, I use my second one. I consume more mana, so I can use W and Q, and that's why he died. Are you greedy, clueless, or uh, what? That you didn't use your heal solve? Or are you plotting? Like, I have potion? You... What's that? Wait, what did you mean? Yeah, Sorry? You, you have a healing potion. You're either yeah. greedy, clueless, or, 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 or so aware that you can make this skill without using it, and you're just saving it for later. Uh, yeah, I was aware. Because the, the biscuits aren't enough here. Like, they are, they are more than enough. Like, here I also used one biscuit only, and kind of scouting out, right? But here, I'm not sure how, but here I just not okay, yeah, it's okay, but no, I don't need my potion. It's that's more so, than enough. That's so pro. You're even saving the heal self in addition to getting the kill. Yeah, but this did not, I did not make that conscious in the game. Like, that happened subconsciously. From, like, when I think back to it, I tried to put myself in my shoes here. What would I have done? But yeah, 100% yeah. I just did that consciously. You don't have because... to uh, verbalize the words in your head in order to do exactly. it on purpose. Sure. Yeah, exactly. And so here, um, it's an interesting position here because I have two options here for myself. I could instantly recall and TP back. And in hindsight, I believe that was the better opportunity. But what's happening with the wave currently? Mm, it's kind of in, in uh, it's kind of, oh it's pushing into you a little bit right into me a little bit isn't it pushing into you i'm trying to see why i i'm not sure i'm asking you so why, what logic tells you that it's pushing into me right now uh wait i'm, I'm trying to count oh you were blocking yeah because that, 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 that's what exactly but i have a full medium wave here and he has a full medium wave here yeah. like, like we both have the same medium wave here it's the yeah. same medium wave. oh it's the same medium wave. okay yeah go on uh, play it a bit so here I do damage that two oh, yeah. a little bit. So you 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 probably hit one creep once with a splash spell or so. Yeah. And so it is going to slightly go over to him. If and that is only if uh the damage output and spread is consistent. Like couldn't there be some RNG where his creeps target yeah, there one is, of yours yes. more. So like in theory your your wave is like fifty one percent, fifty two percent, and his is forty eight. But uh there could be some RNG that will actually change that, right? Yeah, there is RNG involved in this, but there is actually also a um thing that we can see why this wave is actually instantly pushing towards my opponent and that is the position of the wave yeah yeah all your creeps are incentivized to hit one or two of his yes but he has some somewhat the same i put it more of like the position in terms of like actual where it's located in the lane is it okay. closer to my side of the lane or his side of the lane right now and slightly closer to yours so your next wave will join up forces earlier exactly and ah. that means it's ultimately pushing to my opponent even if I had one me less right now, it would probably still oh, push towards yeah, my yeah. opponents. Oh, that because makes sense. what happens, of course, is let's say, similar to earlier where there was like three casters left, right? If there's yeah. only two means left here at the end, yeah. but my next meme wave drives faster, these two means will stay alive and then randomly I have a new wave with two extra means. Yeah. Because this entire wave will die, right? Because yeah. my means drive faster. That's why it will push towards my opponent. So yeah. here, so so uh, it's a tricky decision, but I end up hard pushing this with the idea that by hard pushing this, I at least get the full cannon wave. Um, uh -huh. And then I am going to lose next wave because my opponent is TPing as well, right? If he did not have TP, I would not have to utilize it. And by TP, uh, but, you mean the summoner spell? Yeah, the summoner spell. So yeah. he's already back in lane and he's going to try oh, and yeah. freeze the wave here. And now I'm kind of scared because enemy jungler is probably coming back into topside again. Remember oh. when I said the pathing? Because yeah. look, my Maokai is both side again. It's so you're not right facing side. superior XP now? Yes, oh, no, I, you did kill him though. I, exactly, I did kill him. Uh, we were dead even on the XP this game. Oh, okay. Because the, yeah, I, I lost a little bit of come, XP. The jungle will come back to you. Yes, my jungle is back to me again, and Rengar is bathing the bot again. So this was pretty much the full early game of um what's it called like let's say a more so losing matchup but my opponent having lack of knowledge so therefore i was still in a completely fine position and now he has a sheen which is only 700 gold in terms of items and i had a 1.2k gold reset however due to the nature of the champion he's still somewhat a little bit stronger than me but let's say i had level six and he's level six and we're both 100 percent hp you would still beat me but th th that's talking too much about the matchup and stuff like that yeah and okay. uh, when when would be, and I know this is a big leap forward, when would be like the first time you would want to leave top lane to go somewhere else to do some business mid or whatever? Generally speaking, once you've uh, killed enemy top lane tier one turret and then uh, crashed the enemy or the en your wave into enemy tier two turret, because uh -huh. that would give you the biggest tempo timer to make a move in the sense that if this turret is gone, you crash the wave all the way into here. 
yeah. that you have around a minute to do whatever you want on the map before you realistically have to catch waves to get another this third. If this third is also gone, you get an even bigger tempo timer. Makes sense. And then, that 100% makes sense, and I get it. The, is there ever a moment where you might swap with your mid laner and then your mid suddenly and he's top? Yes, that could be to balance death timers and or certain uh, positions. So let's say I've just died in top, right? And yes. there's a very massive wave under my turret. Oh, so he's going to catch and, it and you'll momentarily yeah. cover his until you find another opportunity to reset and swap positions. Perfect. Okay, so everybody's telling me that your voice is randomly jittery or robotic, but it's not like that for me. I, I, really? I, I hear him perfectly. That's weird. I hear you perfectly, but my stream is not hearing you perfectly. That's how does weird. that work? I don't, I don't even know how that makes sense. I've got some people asking, uh, are you guys going to still do a live game as well? And I think we would still like to. Does that still work for you? Yeah, so this is also, I guess, where we could do two things. Yeah. We could either instantly play a live game right now and we try to uh, apply the concepts and knowledge you've learned right now. Yeah. Or we schedule another session where you try to learn to, tr to input everything yourself and we do more so of a live game. But I think it's nice to at least... Uh, sorry, so here's how I see it. Yeah. Because you're, you're, not, you're not able to play ranked yet, right? No. So I think it's fun to do one live game right now and I'll try to direct your gameplay and give you some... Uh, ingrain some of these habits. Yes. And then... Uh, for if you, you're also open to that to do like a future coaching session, then you play a lot, uh, games yourself where you try to uh, apply these concepts and then we can do more of a voter review kind of. Uh, yeah, game. yeah, I'd like that. Uh, I, look, I look forward to a next session as well. Let's let's do that. And yeah, let's give the people a live game as well. 